What's good, everybody? For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international cinematographer and colorist, and in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys the proper LUT workflow in DaVinci Resolve. With this comes the release of my brand new cinematic LUT pack, which I am super excited about. Not only is it much improved over last year's generation, but they work with every major camera band out there, which is something I'm excited to give to you guys. So much so that if you bought last year's generation of my LUT pack recently, then you should have received an email with an updated link as my gift to you. This LUT workflow is specifically designed to increase the dynamic range that you can achieve when you're color grading with LUTs in DaVinci Resolve. A link in the description down below will take you to my LUT pack and you can also use the discount codes stay home, stay safe as my gift to you. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right guys, here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and as you guys can see, we have tons of examples of how those LUTs work in DaVinci Resolve, but let's take two and break down the process. First, let's familiarize ourselves with the LUT panel. So we're gonna go up to the LUT icon, and in order to install any LUTs, all you're going to do is left click on the LUTs folder, open file location, and you will be taken to the main directory that has the DaVinci Resolve LUTs. All you have to do is go in and drag and drop your LUT pack, and you should be good to go. Just left click and hit refresh and everything should reset. So the LUT workflow in Resolve is pretty simple. All we're going to do is add a second node and apply our LUT onto that node. Now, common temptation is to simply left click on the first node and add any of the 3D LUTs available. But if you think of nodes as an export, then you're baking in the information when you're making corrections into another node. So if you were to make a correction in node one, it's going to be baked into node two and you've lost all of your raw data. So all we're going to do is we're going to apply the LUT to node two and then we can close this panel out and come into our curves and make some adjustments until the image is to our liking. So we're gonna make our exposure adjustments here. So let's just bring up those shadows just a bit and bring our black point down. And then we're gonna drag and just make sure we get it right where we like it. We can move that black point back just to get some softness in those shadows. And then all we have to do is move the temperature gauge and we've corrected for our skin tone. So that's how these LUTs are designed. Exposure correction and move the temperature gauge around with the tint to get nice skin tones. And that's how you're pretty much gonna go about any LUT in the LUT workflows. Um, regardless of if you're using my LUTs or if you're using some of the Blackmagic Design LUTs or the DJI LUTs in DaVinci Resolve. So coming back in here, we can also just add just a little bit of saturation and then to continue on into our workflow, we continue to grade as normal. So for example, if you wanted to right here, you can qualify your skin tones in the qualifier tab and do all the other things I've taught you throughout the other tutorials. You're just using the LUT to get the main grade down. I do know for a fact that these skin tones should be pretty spot on, which they are. So after you qualified your skin tones, you can add another node and add a layer node and create your look by adding some teals into the mid-tones. And that would give us a teal and orange look using the primary wheels like I have also taught you guys in the past. And you guys can see, once I connect the alpha output, just how quickly these LUTs make the process. Now this is just if you want to customize your LUT. You do not have to do any of that. Like I said, when you're using LUTs, this is already a good image and you came from something that's like this. So you're starting here and then you're ending here on top of that look. But again, it's still a very nice image. Looking at one more example, I'm gonna take you guys into another method that I like. So again, we're gonna add our node and then we're gonna add a LUT, and this time we're gonna use Distinguished. We're gonna drop out of our LUT panel, and then in node one, we are going to just raise those shadows, drop those highlights, and I'm just gonna draw this back a little bit. And then again, we can look at our temperature gauge and move accordingly 
and then I see some greens in the shadows of her skin, which is how I designed the slut, but if you want to get rid of that, or just add a little bit more of a, a redness to her skin, just go ahead and slide that tint. Before and after. Now, let's take a look at why this is very important. If we close out our nodes and open up our gallery, I'm gonna take a still of what we have right here. We're gonna go back to our nodes and I'm going to switch this around. So we're making our corrections in node two instead of node one. Do you see what happened? Let's go ahead and play the still. This is what our corrections look like when we apply in the first node. This is what happens when we do it in the second node. We simply do not have that information there to accurately adjust the exposure. So that is why we apply the LUT in the second node. And then one of my favorite things to do is to add some film grain. So we're gonna add some 35 millimeter film grain in here. We're just gonna turn up that grain strength because I like a lot of grain. And then lastly, we can go in with one more final node and we can add in some film damage to solidify that look. And all I do with the film damage is I turn off the film blur. And right here, we have a very unique look in what took just seconds. This is why I am super excited about this LUT pack because it's really gonna speed up your workflow in DaVinci Resolve. And hopefully with this workflow, you will maximize the dynamic range you can achieve while color grading in Resolve as well. As you guys can see, using LUTs in DaVinci Resolve is super simple, and as long as you maintain this proper LUT workflow, then you will always have the maximum dynamic range available when color grading your footage. Also, be sure to head to a link in the description down below to grab your copy of my LUT pack and use the code STAY HOME STAY SAFE to save on checkout. If you guys like this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications if you have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media. A link is in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. If you guys are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Live, love, laugh, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.